The drains work for a map. When you hear politicians or the media saying it's really disgraceful that 20% of children can't read at the appropriate standard when they're 11, the tests that are bringing about these kinds of comments are not really examining whether they can read the print on the page. They're examining or testing quite fine responses to children's ability to interpret and deduce meanings from what they read. Reading for understanding and enjoyment is the focus of Olivia O'Sullivan's work at the Centre for Literacy in Primary Education and their Power of Reading project. They work with teachers to develop ways of involving children in books and stories as a way of raising standards as well as enjoyment. Last year's project group included Catherine Gadula. Last year I was involved in the whole Power of Reading project and that basically completely changed my whole idea of how I teach literacy. I tend to spend quite a long time on each of the texts because there's so much you can do around it. The last book we did was Bigu. One of the ways of getting the children to think about the story is to make sure that they know the story well. So one of the things we did was get them to retell the story by making up their own Bigu book. They took it in turns to do the illustrations and the writing and they talked about what happened on each page and what they were going to write. We looked really closely at this picture and we thought about this little girl here should have gone to get the teacher because Beagie was in the playground. So lots of different ideas came out of, of that where they really think about not just the main character but the other characters in the story and what their reason for doing different things might be. How she's feeling on the inside. Drawings of where we think Bigu might come from, so what her planet might look like, and who might be there, and where they might live. Today, 2G is starting work on the book Grace and Family. They've met the main character in an earlier book. Now they're going to put themselves in her shoes. We had a look at a book all about Amazing Grace, and then we thought about everything we found out about Grace. The first thing I did was thought about what we'd learnt about Grace as a character, and we went over all the things that we know about her. We found out she likes making up stories, she likes watching the ballet, and she has lost her two front teeth. How did we find that out? Because you can tell in the picture. You can see it in the picture, can't you? Now, today, we're going to read another story. And then about Grace. we read the first two Old pages Grace of Grace and, and Family. Family. It's one of the books which is recommended by the Power of Reading project. The books which they have recommended have always really engaged the children and got them thinking about a lot of issues and ideas um, that come out of books. Grace lived with her ma and nana and a cat called Pawpaw. Next to her family, what Grace liked best She was, was reading the book stories. aloud to children. We see Such that as essential for so children to be drawn into the book, to feel enthusiastic about the story, and for all children, whether they can read the book or not, to actually hear the words on the page, Grace read by a teacher who's actually giving a real tune to the story. About how we split up and your papa went back to Africa. He has another family now, but he's still your father. Even Using text like this helps you to deal with a lot of the issues which the children might have inside their heads, but have maybe never really had an avenue or a voice to, to say it. Guess what? Your papa sent the money for two tickets to visit him in Africa for the Easter holidays. Nana says she'll go with you if you want. She had made up so many fathers for herself, she had forgotten what the real one was like. OK. I'm not going to read any more. I think that's a great way to use a text, is that you don't dive in and use a whole book straight away, because it, me it means that the children are also really looking forward to what's going to happen next. Does anybody have any ideas as to what we could add now to our chart? Have we found out anything new about Grace? Rachel? Her papa split up with her 
with her mum and then he went back to Africa. Her father lives in Africa so she doesn't really get to see him. She had two tickets from her father to go to Africa. Brilliant. So, now, I imagined I was writing in Grace's diary as Grace. I wrote a really short diary entry as Grace before she got the tickets from her father. And it just was a way of getting the children to start thinking about getting into role and writing diary entries. Because although we've done it before this year, it is a relatively new idea for them. So I wanted to show them a model of it first before we started to write our own. Maybe my papa would be kind and helpful. I wish I knew what he was really like getting to be that person in the book and it becomes real, it becomes meaningful, it becomes something that they want to do and that they want to find out more about. Why do you think Grace might want to keep a diary? To be honest. Because she got something important in there. If it important in where? In her head. In her head? And Jonas, what does she want to do with that thing in her head? Um, keep it. She wants to keep it. She wants to write, to write it down, to keep it there so that she can read it. Good. We thought about how Grace would be feeling getting the plane ticket and the children were put into pairs. One of you is Ma and one of you is Grace. And they were okay. reenacting the, the moment when Grace's um, mum gave her, or her ma gave her the ticket. How would she be feeling inside about getting this ticket? I want you to also show me on your face how you're feeling. Looking around the room, you could really tell that the children were thinking about it a lot just by what they were doing with their faces. Oh, feeling very shocked. Oh, you know, they were looking shocked and they were like, <gasps> You know, I'm going, I'm going to Africa and, and I think that was a really good way of starting them off thinking about the thought of going away to see her father. It's a package for you. If, what if my papa's got a new family? How would I feel then? I think using the plane tickets in the picture was a good way of starting them off, getting them to think about it, actually doing something that was happening in the story. You're helping children to actually step inside the story through role play, through talking to each other. And you're going to be Ma and you're going to be Grace, OK? By acting out, I think it was a really good way of getting them to think about um, the ideas and Grace's thoughts of going before we started to do any writing. What we're going to do now is come back to the carpet and then we're going to talk about all the ideas that you came up with. We actually wrote down and brainstormed Grace's ideas on going to Africa and wrote, wrote them in our class journal. So how she's feeling about going to visit her dad in Africa? Um, happy. Shocked. Happy. Bit sad. Excited. A little bit confused. Confused. What a great word. Teachers and children benefit from sequences of activities that are coherent so that the writing that you do and the discussions that you have and the books you hear read aloud are all linked together so all the time you're going in deeper the next diary entry for the day and then we did a shared write together on the board wrote, i so when she tried to use the children's ideas to write a diary entry about how grace was feeling having received the um plane ticket and the thought of going away to Africa. How are we going to start it off? I've got some tickets to go to Africa Great. to see so my dad. Shall we say today? Today is the first time of my life. Today is the best day of my life? Because um, I'm going to, to see, see my papa. Now, have we got a sentence there? Yes, so what do I need to do now? We'll start off. Thank you, Yonis. I don't know what he's like, so I'm a bit worried what he's... Great! I feel um, a bit cross because um, um, my mum can't come with me. We'll first act it out, then we'll talk about it, and then we'll, you know, model what, what's been done already, and then they, hopefully, they get to a point where they're like, I've got so many ideas, I just want to start writing, you know, and actually that is what happened to a lot of them. They got back, they opened up their books, and they just started writing straight away. I can see some beautiful writing going on here. They're really thinking about this. Well done. They're very mixed ability-wise. There's some children who need a bit, a bit 
more support in some children who are really flying, but I think it happens in every classroom. What can a dad be? A dad can be, um, um, he's a man and he can drive. You've talked about so many ideas which have arisen from the text that they, they're not really ever in that situation where they're, you know, dry for ideas and not sure what to do. Dear diary, I am feeling sad. I am confused. There's huge concern about children's writing. Although this project may appear to be just about enjoyment, it certainly isn't. It's about very important areas of learning. And I know this also from my research, as children wrote longer pieces, the quality of their spelling and punctuating improve. Dear diary, I, you, um, yam, I am, is... You can tell through the quality of the writing that emerges from these kinds of activities that real learning is taking place. Dear diary, I am a bit scared of meeting my papa because I... I'm going to read out some of them now so that we can share all the great writing we've been doing. I read out some of the children's diary entries and then asked the other children in the class to comment positively on what they'd read or what they'd heard in the diary. When I'm reading it out, I want you to think carefully about what in the diary is really good. Dear diary, I feel a bit scared. I'm, it's, it's not normal that I get to go there. I don't know what he looks like and what it might feel like. Dangerous, maybe. I think I'm going. I've got a ticket. Grace. Isn't that great? She's right. She doesn't know what it's going to feel like because she hasn't been there yet. I liked it when he, um, when he added in, um, I'm going to go on the... I'm going to Africa in three hours. It's something that really helps to raise the whole ethos in your classroom where they're celebrating each other's work and they're feeling really motivated and um, inspired by each other, hopefully. What do you think might happen in the story? She might make new friends at Africa and go to a new school. Her mama comes to um, Africa and um, they live with their papa in Africa happily ever after. Their way that they were able to express themselves and how they were able to connect with some of the themes that came up in the book was just... It really a, a lovely thing to be a part of. OK, I'll leave this here by the reading corner and just add your own ideas around it in pencil, yeah? Great. Before, I might have just read a book for half an hour at the end of the day and then said, OK, bye, <laughs> go home and see you tomorrow and not talk about it, which just seems ridiculous to me now because the benefit of using good quality text with children is just amazing. You just find out more about them as people, but I think it's also a really great way of forming more of a bond or a relationship with your class, which feels really strange to say it, that it can all come from a book, but it really can. I am worried that my papa is going to be, but I couldn't fit anything healthy.